Bang, and we are back. Our next speaker is a Canadian uh, of your, uh, Ukrainian descent. Uh, he is a prominent blockchain and crypto entrepreneur, investor, one of the crypto pioneers, and early adopter of Bitcoin and Litecoin. He is well known in the scene as the founder of Coin Payments, uh, the world's number one payment gateway for cryptocurrencies. In 2019, he founded Vlas, an AI-powered blockchain ecosystem startup based in Switzerland's Crypto Valley. He is also an advisor and investor of Mind AI, a, Kore a Korean AI startup. Please put your virtual hands together for Alex Alexdrov. Alex, welcome to Blockdown 2020. Well, pleasure to be here with you guys. Uh, it's it's fun to do it over the internet with this whole Corona lockdown. It's kind of interesting how the world's adjusting. Do I do I just jump in? I guess I can start my presentation. Please do. Okay, excellent. Sounds great. Uh, well, thanks everybody. Um, thanks for the introduction. Appreciate that. I uh, just want to jump right into it. We only have ten minutes, so I'm going to go right through this, the slides and everything we have here. So uh, I'm here to present Vallast. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about uh, my previous startups or anything else in the industry. If you're curious, you can uh, look me up on LinkedIn uh, or just sub see some of the previous YouTube videos I've done. So Vallast is a virtual expanding learning autonomous system. Uh, the idea is to create a blockchain that navigates and scales itself and learns and optimizes its own, uh, its own blockchain and its own consensus over time uh, that allows quick response to threats and quick response to scalability issues on a network, uh, which will allow it to perform in theory better than any other blockchain that's hard coded over time because you're guessing everything before we actually see the world usage. Um, let's go to the next slide. Excellent. So the project is as originally started with the coin payments user base, uh, which is just about 3 million users right now. And that's uh, still largest shareholder of that company. I've stepped down as a CEO currently, and now I'm just a chairman and appointing another CEO, but we're continuing this project now, and I'm CEO of Vellis, so I'm putting all my focus on this project now. Uh, this is definitely my passion. And uh, with Coin Payments help, we're gonna be using it as a utility token over the next year when the features are ready to be rolled out. Um, we do have 3 million active users there right now, and cryptocurrencies that are being accepted for payments. Through coin payments, will include Vellus as a discount token to take those payments, do conversions, uh, store coins in its cold storage, and so on and so forth. So basically, we're really excited to have this as a partnership with something that's available to us as a result of a uh, direct relationship between the companies uh, in the sense of um, we actually used the user base to uh, educate people about this project. Now, let's go to the next slide. Uh, we, uh, we have a team now split up between Pretty much every part of the world. Uh, we started out as a, as a team working on Valas in Switzerland, Zug, uh, in Crypto Valley. And then it spread out. Now we have uh, our offices uh, in uh, in Cayman Islands. We have people working in, in the United States. We have people working in in Cayman Islands, in in, in Canada, uh, in Amsterdam, in Kiev, in Moscow, in Tomsk, in Russia. And um, we just opened up an office in Thailand. We're working with people in Hong Kong. And we have somebody who's in, in Shanghai at the moment as well. We also have an active office in Korea. So we've, we've grown quite a bit over the last year since the project uh, first was announced. And, and we're really excited to have this wonderful team join us. So we have any, anywhere from um, you know, developers to uh, team leaders to marketing, marketing teams and so on and so forth. Now, currently offering a Vellus, we are already live. It's not a token. It's not an ERC-20. It is a full-fledged full, full blockchain. We are now in a version two of it, or alpha. Uh, so the first version was pre-alpha, and that was a proof of concept that we released in, uh, on 4th of July in 2019. And then uh, in April this year, we released uh, our alpha, which is preparation for beta when everything goes open source and AI is fully functioning. At this stage, we have released our multi-coin wallet that allows people to store, um, I believe, eight different cryptocurrencies at the moment. Uh, that, that packaging would be Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Dash. Uh, we're adding, uh, we're just about to go live actually with, uh, with Zcash, uh, Monero, and Dogecoin. And then that includes all the ERC-20 tokens. So 
you now have one place to live. And wonderful thing about this wallet is your Velosphere tag or Valonian tags, as we call it, is going to let you pick a name that will work for all the currencies, which will eventually get uh, containerized into our blockchain. So this is a step one. Uh, so people get used to it as a multi-currency type of system, which is where we're headed with Velos event in eventuality of the beta of the network. So instead of retraining people then, our idea was to start people off by using the multi-wallets without the back end, which is one of the most secure wallets right now you can use on the market without the hardware element, obviously. Uh, but at this point, we will be integrating Trezor logins and we're going to be working with uh, other hardware wallet providers, uh, which you probably can guess, but I'm not going to name because we haven't approached them yet. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So some of the blockchains still have issues. Uh, one of the biggest issues, in my opinion, in blockchain space in general, doesn't matter which coin you take, is governance. And uh, you know, scalability is not so great of a problem anymore in some cases. Like if you look at uh, projects like EOS, uh, their scalability is quite fantastic. Um, but to do quite a bit of a centralization, and that has to be it has to be done to be sort of a more corporate approach to a blockchain that, that they chose to do. And I think it's great. It helps uh, change the direction a little bit uh, in that space. And what we're doing here is we're trying to basically, in our view, correct the mistakes that they have made in the sense of going away from the ETH standard, uh, where I think their wheel does not need to be reinvented. Uh, most of the developers are used to uh, parity and they want, and they want to use, uh, sorry, not parity, uh, <laughs> when they're used to um, uh, Solidity and, and everybody just wants to program their smart contracts on Solidity. And therefore, you know, re-educating re people in their own smart contract language. We attempted that in the beginning. We realized that might not be the smartest idea from the results of communicating directly with our users and finding out what they're not happy about having to learn. And we decided to not go away from that standard. But what is uh, needed in this blockchain space is the optimization of the standard. Um, it is, there is so much room for optimization that can get us where we need to go. And an improvement in randomness, uh, which is one of the things I think we've done. And, that's one of the problems that we've solved in, in, in with uh, with Velos team with the uh, Velos project. Uh, something that we're going to be publishing now very shortly. But in a brief, what we're doing is we're parsing blocks from we're pulling blocks from blockchain of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Zcash, and Monero. And the reason we picked those four is uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are ASIC uh, backed coins, which have enormous uh, mining power, which foreseeably isn't going to be an issue. And individually, they don't have the best random function, but combine the, the four of them and Zcash being the great, greatest privacy coin, in my opinion, out there, Monero being the second best, uh, just because of how they handle the privacy in, in, in its core, but primarily GPU mind. Uh, we decided to split that up and we pick those blocks and we create randomness out of seeding those four hashes that we pick up from their recent blocks to create our blockchain. Now, that's a kind of an interesting approach. We're excited to try it out, but we think that that solves a lot of these issues because if you're able to break the randomness of each one of the uh, uh, of blockchains I just named, uh, we are no longer really of your interest. You can <laughs> you can make a lot more money uh, breaking Bitcoin than you would Velos or your foreseeable future anyway. So uh, by, by adding those elements, uh, it's an experimental feature sets and then using AI to analyze uh, the smart contracts. Now, another great thing that was installed in governance on our blockchain is that we, we do have delegated proof of stake but the uh, nodes are picked by the network based on their reputation scoring that is assigned to them based on their performance. And over time, AI, uh, because of the how we build a blockchain that's already deployed, our consensus is actually a smart contract in our blockchain. Now, it's quite a revolutionary idea. Um, I don't know too many projects that have done this yet. And essentially, that allows you to do a voting and change consensus on the fly. The idea for this is this will lay the groundwork for AI to pull the statistics from the nodes and analyze where the shortcomings are and where, where the room for optimization is and essentially suggest the new consensus for, uh, for the nodes to vote on and imply, employ that and deploy that. And then also quickly response to a threat to the network. If there's an issue, you can literally basically fold the network into the trust nodes uh, in, in a sort of protection mode. Now, the, the system will be learning from the data sets live constantly. And uh, we're excited to see this because we've already done a test on our network, uh, changing consensus entirely from the moment we launched in the first week with full success. 
and the, and all these features are being shown now in the Velas wallet, which you can find in wallet.velas.com, the web version, the desktop versions are coming out next week, along with the mobile version uh, rolling out the week, the following week. It's already now. We're really excited to have that out to people. And the most exciting thing is the Velasphere. So Velasphere is an ambitious project of ours to be able to support such projects like OpenAI or MindAI. Um, when they want to build in our system, we want to provide ecosystem resources like decentralized GPU, uh, like decentralized IPFS and decentralized CPU usage and other resources in the future for like fast access memory and everything else that's needed, but powered by our users and, and users' machines that are going to be connected along with companies that want to spare some of their horsepower to power Velas network. That is also being previewed in a wallet now and is going to be launched um, shortly here by before the end of April. Alex, That's I'm so sorry to rush you, my man. That, that was an excellent presentation and an epic, crazy Try. commercial. <laughs> that was the most epic. We had a bit of technical difficulties getting you on, and I'm so sorry. But hopefully, no uh, seeing as you're in the, the AI world and obviously the blockchain world, we hope to see you in the 3D environment at the after parties, and we can catch up. There's lots and lots of people there that we can communicate Great. with and party with. So thank you very much for joining us, Alex. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Cool, my man. All right, we're going to a very, very quick break, and then we're back with a super, super special guest, so stick around.